What's up everybody? In this video, we're going to be talking about network segmentation using VLANs. But first, I want to explain to you the importance of network segmentation. It's huge and it still often gets missed in this day and age. So when a hacker tries to connect into your environment or even gets onto your environment, one of the first things that they're gonna try to do is they're gonna try to see where else they can go. This is often called lateral movement and pivoting. And so they're gonna use a, some type of IP scanner, whether it's an NMAP, uh, advanced IP scanner, or their own scanner that they wrote to find all the IP addresses. And as long as they have landed on a host that has that right network, they're gonna potentially find lots of systems. And one of the biggest mistakes organizations make with their network security is they do not separate guest or uh, less important networks from the more critical and important networks. Uh, one example is a large retailer that got hacked through their HVAC system. The hackers were able to access that from the public internet and then they found out that that public connection that that uh, HVAC server had a connection on the same network as all the point of sale machines. So they pivoted onto those point of sale machines and over uh, the course of several weeks and months installed memory scraping malware on those machines. All because there was not network segmentation there. I don't want that to happen to you. And I want you as an, an IT professional, networking professional, and cybersecurity professional to be able to look at a network and say, we need to fix this. Or when you build them from scratch, say, We're, we need to segment this out from the beginning. Because think about it. If they can't, even if, let's say you had a server, an old server on your network that's vulnerable, if they can't even get to it they're, from the network, they can't do much with that, right? And I'm not saying keep vulnerable systems on your environment. I'm just saying if, you're, if you know there's vulnerable systems on your environment, one of the best mitigating factors you can put in place is segmenting it on the network. If you disagree with me, let's argue in the comments. Let me know what you think. But now let's move on to what I'm showing you here in this lab. And I'm going to start by giving you an idea of the setup. So the scenario is... Bob's grocery store and at Bob's grocery store he has two networks Bob has he has the back office network for the managers and employees to do all the things they need to do on the from the administrative perspective on the computers you know cert file shares and active directories back there and time time keeping systems are back there and all kinds of things you would have in a larger grocery store and then there's, there is the point of sale network that we're gonna be setting up. And the point of sale network is for those uh, point of sale systems for when uh, customers check out, they swipe their card and it gets processed and goes over the network, but we don't want those systems to be on the same network. So in this setup, what I've got here is um, I've got a router this is Cisco 2911 router and I've got a Cisco 3560 switch and the reason I'm showing you this physical connection is because when it comes to VLANs you can't really see them physically like if you went and looked at a switch it's hard to tell what is in what VLAN unless it's labeled or I think Ubiquity has some cool feature where you can take your phone and through augmented reality technology you actually see which ports are, are in which VLAN. But on these devices and on most devices you do not have that functionality. So I want the back office network machines to have ports 1 through port 12 on the switch. So I want it to be 1 through 12 and uh, I want the point of sale machines to be 13 through 23 and we will know that this is working and I will show you how to set this up right now 
Alright, so I'm on the Switch here. The Switch is Falcon 9, and I am going to start to configure it, the VLANs. So I'm going to do show, uh, or first of all, when you do show VLAN, what you're going to see is, you're going to see that every, dev every port on a Switch is in VLAN 1 to start off with. And we don't want to use VLAN 1 we want to use our own VLAN. So we're going to, I'm going to go into global configuration mode. And this process may be different on different manufacturers. And it, actually, it is a different process depending on what manufacturer or what vendor made the switch. But ultimately, it's the same idea. So we're going to do, um, we're going to do VLAN 10. I'm going to name that back office. Oops, let me spell back office and then we're gonna do int range like I mentioned earlier F1 through 12 so int range lets me go into a bunch of ports then I'm do switch port mode access switch port access VLAN 10 exit I always like to configure and confirm so every time you configure confirm so do show VLAN and they they went in there that's where I need them and then I'm gonna do int so then I'm gonna create another one VLAN 20 name up oh, we go name point of sale enter and then we're gonna do int range F 0, 013 through 23 because I'm using 24 right now for trunks we'll talk about trunks later enter switch port mode access and then switch port access VLAN 20 and I'm going to type exit and do sh I, c I don't have to exit it's just a habit I can do show VLAN and then Okay, cool. I've got my back office and I've got my point of sale VLANs going, which should be very um, good for us. Now let's test to see if this actually works. The way we're going to do that is I'm basically going to connect this laptop, which represents a back office computer, and then I'm going to connect this laptop and see what IP addresses they get. So I, I do need you to understand that um, the back office network is 192.168.10.0. The VLAN or the point of sale VLAN should be 192.168.20. So when I plug these laptops in, I should this laptop should get a dot ten address. This one should get a dot twenty. So let's try it. I'm gonna take this cable here. And I'm going to plug it into port one. We're going to watch that come up. I love to see that happen. Once that comes up, and once it goes green, we're going to uh, look at the IP address we got. And that will tell us if we are successful. Still going. There we go, it's green. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna open up command prompt. I'm gonna do IP config. Oh, it got one. <laughs> I took, so after, a re after doing the renew command, it did get an IP address. Now let's go over to the Mac. So I'm taking the Mac and I'm plugging it into port 13 which is in VLAN 20 we're gonna have to give that some time once that comes up the Mac should also get an IP which I will just show that from here I'm gonna you'll see that I'm gonna set this to from manual to automatic or using DHCP and the light's green, so when I hit apply, I should get an IP address. 
Remember, it might take some time here. There we go, and I got one. That's how you set up VLANs on a Cisco switch. But I do want to talk to you a little bit more about why that is so important and why we need to do that. Now that these are set up, while they're still on the same switch, they are not on the same network. And that's a, that's a, that is a logical, or I'll say a layer two boundary that we've created there. So anytime packets travel from, let's say, the back office network through to the switch, as soon as the packet hits the switch port, the switch looks at that VLAN database table, it references that, and it assigns a VLAN ID to the frame of, of that, that, you know, on that protocol data unit or packet, whatever you want to call it, when it goes through here, it gets tagged with VLAN 10 so that it does not get sent to the switch ports that are in VLAN 20, right? Same thing happens with this machine that's on the point of sale system. So you couldn't do that. You couldn't get across. Now there are, there are types of attacks that are very hard. I'm telling you they're challenging to pull off. Um, yes, they exist. It's called VLAN hopping, but they're pretty noisy and they, they, they can create some issues. So it's as simple as that on most devices. I've seen some Netgear managed switches that have just drop down buttons. Cisco Meraki, Ubiquity is usually drop down. But when you have your, your Juniper devices and things like that, they have the command line. Uh, Cisco IOS has a GUI too, but I like to use the command line. It's more efficient. And you know, you, you can save a breach with that alone right and I, I, again I'm not saying it's just network segmentation that's the answer for all cybersecurity things but it can solve a lot of those problems that happen because networks weren't properly segmented you know other examples could be colleges that have a guest network where all the students connect to and the faculty connect to that same guest network and also there's production servers on that same network or they're all reachable from each other's network and in this case I don't have it it's not allowed to connect between the two networks so if you tried to ping or you tried to connect you couldn't get through so you know if a back office computer gets hacked then the hacker would not be able to pivot on over to the the um, point of sale network and get access to those systems or, or try to at least so put this network segmentation in place and um, I look forward to seeing you in the next video